It is a problem that's been plaguing America's farmers. The tractors, planters, and other gear they rely on can sometimes break down. But in many cases, they're not able or even permitted to make repairs, even on equipment they own. But new laws are changing that, just as the principle of repairing rather than discarding has implications for us all. Barry Peterson has the story. On a hot eastern Colorado day, the Wood family farms the land that three generations ago they used horses to plow. High-tech wizardry means the planter puts every seed at the perfect depth and never plants the same row twice. But if the software glitches and the equipment shuts down, only a dealer's repairman has the codes to diagnose the problem. Without access giving them a chance to fix it themselves, a farmer can wait days, even weeks, for a service call, says farmer Danny Wood. When you're planting, when you're harvesting, you're driving a tractor like this and it stops, and it takes you three days, five days, 10 days to get service, what does that mean to a farmer? Well, it means you could lose your whole crop because you can, like today, there's some clouds building up. It could turn into a severe storm. It could come in and wipe out your whole crop, hail it off, and then you have no income for the year from that crop. Danny Wood was in fourth grade when he started helping his dad farm this land. He trained as a mechanic, then took over the farm, then took on a cause called Farmer's Right to Repair and testified for a law to give farmers the right to fix their own equipment. That's him with his tractor as a backdrop as Colorado Governor Jared Polis signed America's first farmer's right to repair law. So manufacturers must sell software to farmers or independent repair shops so they can access diagnostic codes. Farmers around the country are very supportive of this idea of the farmer's right to repair. Tell me why it has such resonance with farmers. Because we are independent. We like to be able to do our things on our time, our schedule, and we like to be able to make our things run without being reliant on somebody else to do that. Farmers are not people that like to rely on others. We ask John Deere, America's foremost farm equipment manufacturer, some of whose Colorado dealers opposed the right to repair law for an interview. They declined and instead sent an email saying, John Deere supports the customer's decision to repair their own products, utilize an independent repair service, or have repairs completed by an authorized dealer. John Deere additionally provides manuals, parts, and diagnostic tools to facilitate maintenance and repairs. It's not a new issue. Almost 100 years ago, J.D. Forney developed an early form of right to repair, a portable welder so farmers could fix their own plows and early tractors. Like the tractors featured at Denver's Forney Museum of Transportation, where we met State Representative Brianna Tatone. So really, when you look back at history and what farmers worked with in tractors, they pretty much always were fending for themselves. Absolutely. She represents a mostly suburban Denver district and got a right to repair bill passed for wheelchairs, then for farm equipment all part of what she sees as a much bigger issue. It comes down to a lot of the uh, environmental issues around the consumer products that are just thrown away. The planned obsolescence of, of these electronic equipment that goes into the trash heap. Her idea is really going back to the future when TVs to toasters were repaired, not thrown away. Now, right to repair laws are in effect for products from tractors to appliances to digital devices in four states. And debate is underway in two dozen more states, pushed in a campaign by the U.S. Public Interest Research Group led by Nathan Proctor. We estimated in a report that we did called Repair Saves Families Big that if consumers would repair instead of replace their electronics, they could save $382 on, on average per household which uh, equals about $50 billion per year when averaged across all the households in America. So this is big money. It's not just saving money, but saving our planet because the world's hunger for things like cell phones and electric car batteries means massive mining and production of rare minerals. In places like China's Inner Mongolia, 
that production has created whole lakes of toxic waste. To help, we can fix or update our cell phones instead of replacing them with the latest new model. Because manufacturing cell phones take so much energy and so many materials, if Americans use their cell phones for one year longer on average, mm -hmm. they have the same benefits of the, for the climate as taking 636,000 cars off the road, which is about the number of registered vehicles in the state of New Mexico. So really, if, if I want to do something to help the environment, it's as easy as waiting a year to trade in my cell phone. Yeah. Danny Wood is helping the environment by keeping his older equipment running. A farmer who knows how to fix his own equipment is independent. What does that mean? That means that I don't have to rely on somebody else. I can make my own stuff run. And you save how much a year? Oh, I'm sure 40, 50,000. The return of what was once every farmer's way to save money on repairs. Do it yourself. For CBS Saturday Morning, Barry Peterson, Pete's Colorado. An update now, Apple has changed course and is now urging members of the California legislature to pass the right to repair bill. And we were all talking about it, a couple things. You need to find people sometimes to repair. Yeah. I know the farmers want to repair on their own. Some of the repairs, if you need somebody, you need to be able to find the people to repair the equipment. Yeah, and then you have to wait for them. Barry covered a lot of ground. Yeah, he did. In that story, it's very interesting. But it's also because there are fewer people repairing items right. like TV sets and washers and dryers, it's yeah. more expensive.